art is the reshaping of reality by man to present it in an understandable way. As the artist recreates the world around him, it is shaped by how he sees it and what he believes in. The Indian artist did not attempt to depict only the material reality around him. He wished to share the complete experience of the moment, not just the photographic presentation of the shapes around him. Beauty for the Indian artist has been a reflection of the glory of God. In fact, for the ancient artist, the experience of beauty, the ecstasy on seeing nature or art which is truly beautiful, has been considered as akin to Brahmanand or the final bliss. Join us on this journey into the heart of the Indian tradition of painting. Come with us to the gorge of the Vaghora River, where Ajanta was created, to the courts of the Mughals and the Deccani Sultans. Journey with us through the deserts of Rajasthan and the icy lands of Ladakh and Lahol Spiti, in the verdant south and in the gentle hills of the north, experience the compassionate view of life that is enshrined in Indian painting. In the verdant hills of Himachal Pradesh, the soul of man rises constantly in response to the beauty of nature. Amidst the serenity of the overflowing world of creation, the turmoil and clamor of the material world fade away. Here the soul of man yearns always for contact with the Lord who created him. The idiom of painting which was created in the courts of Rajasthan had deep roots in the eternal beliefs of the people. When the Rajput painters came into the verdant sanctuary of the hills of Himachal, their spirit took wings. Here amidst the timeless beauty of creation, a marvelous body of art was born. It is in the silence of these hills that the artist looked within and brought to us the essence of the beauty of life. A warm and vibrant spirit revived in India and spread throughout the 11th and 12th centuries. Vaishnavism, the Krishna cult, brought with it themes of the direct love of God and the losing of oneself in adoration of Him. The Bhakti movement led to an outpouring of poetry, music and art on the theme of the glory and beauty of the Lord. To artists who inherited the compassionate and gentle traditions of ancient Indian painting, this was a time of a great revival. In the meantime, from the 16th century onwards, the Mughal court created a new idiom in the paintings of India. Many Rajput princes who commanded Mughal armies and were courtiers in the Mughal capital were deeply influenced by the ways of the imperial rulers. Through these Rajputs, the style of miniature paintings spread and developed in Rajasthan and in the verdant Himalayas. Today we call the miniatures which blossomed in these hilly areas 
Pahari paintings. The first flowers which blossomed of this art were at Basoli, situated on the banks of the river Abi. Kirpal Singh, who ruled Basoli from 1678, was a great patron of painting. His was one of the first Pahari royal ateliers. In the Basoli paintings, the figures set against expanses of vivid colour are possessed with vitality. They dominate the scene in essentially simple compositions. The hill painter worked with passion, imparting to his work energy and power. Deeply inspired by the Vaishnav themes of Krishna and Radha, he produced many exquisite renderings of their love for each other. In Basoli paintings, the figures are self-assured, yet with a complete absence of even the slightest traces of arrogance and earthly assertion. The bold simplicity directs one to an inner spirituality. The figures are not delicate and exude strength from the direct gaze of their large eyes. Many exquisite works from the Basoli school are based on the ragamalas. A rag is a pattern of notes in classical music. The purpose of a rag is to transport a person entirely, to feel the deep sensations of a particular emotion and ambience. The rags are associated with seasons, times of the day and the worship of particular gods. In the enchanted world of Pahari paintings, poetry found pictorial expression. The great songs of the love of Radha and Krishna, the Geet Govind, written by Jayadev in the 11th century, provided inspiration to the Pahari artists. The Ras Manjari also found pictorial depiction in numerous Pahari paintings. Written by the 15th century poet Bhaudat, it deals with themes of love and longing, in which the main characters are classified as Nayaks and Nayakas. Uh, they're not telling a story per se, they're capturing a mood and they're capturing one individual's state of mind or state of heart, as the case may be. And that's not something we find in, in European paintings very often at all. It's that emphasis on one moment's passion that's so unusual about Rajput painting and about its subject matters, uh, that real emphasis on on emotion as subject matter, not just as something that influences the way you read the subject matter, but as the actual subject of the painting. And that's one of the things that I think is, is really unusual about particularly Rajput painting. The depiction of nature is very stylized and distinctly close to the Rajasthani idiom. Only the essential details of each tree are presented in a simple and vivid manner. 
the stylized flora adds to the decorative patterns of the paintings. The architecture is bold and massive and usually depicted flat and two-dimensionally. The power and vitality of the Basoli miniatures is complemented by the red borders. The borders are not rigid and they do not confine these dynamic paintings within their frames. A remarkable feature is the use of glistening emerald green beetle's wings to represent jewellery. The paintings of Basoli continue the angular features, large eyes and the animated gestures that are seen in the Jain manuscript paintings of Western India. Strong Rajasthani influences are seen in the intense and ardent colours as in the paintings of Mewar. In the Mughal manner, the Basoli rulers are portrayed in the setting of their courts. Basoli paintings never cease to amaze connoisseurs of art. They are simple works, yet with a strength and vitality that is unmatched. In the words of eminent art collector Colonel R. K. Tandon, Haunting dreamscapes, diamond-sharp images, and hypnotic perspective distill an enchanting poetry. These Basoli miniatures have a compelling trance-like quality. They seem to obey a mysterious logic, which flows from another universe. Superb colorists whose stunning colour contrasts seem to shock one to intense awareness. The surge of energy seems to be barely contained by the borders in these miniatures. Around 1670, Kirpal Pal of Basoli married the daughter of Mahipat Dev of nearby Mankot. In the wake of this alliance, some artists shifted from Basoli to Mancourt, where a school of painting developed. The Mancourt style has the Basoli type of eyes and colours. The background is plain and stark, and the colours are rich and saturated. Mancourt miniatures display dramatic movement and bounding rhythmic gestures. The main themes that were painted are the Ramayana and the Bhagavat Puran. The picturesque town of Noorpur was given its name to commemorate the visit of the Mughal Emperor Jahangir and Queen Noor Jahan. A style similar to that of Mankot and Basoli developed. With time a preference began to be shown for milder colours and an increasingly greater delicacy. These very basic human themes of love, of uh, fear, of the excitement, the rasa structure of Indian art, I think, leads it to uh, a feeling for it uh, among 
a very wide range of people. And I think that these feelings open people to the art. Before they know it, it's the actual uh, picture that they're reading or it's the color that they're responding to uh, as they uh, uh, feel the aspects of these narratives. We have series here from the Mahabharata that I, I found in the one picture um, that was the final battle scene. It wasn't until I looked closely that I noticed that they were actually conducting this battle with long leaves of grass. And the whole thing then suddenly became very surreal, uh, something you might expect to find in a Kurosawa film uh, where death and the, the timeless tableau of karma playing itself out takes on this very surreal and, uh, as I say, out of time dimension. Bound in the north and the east by the barren lands of Lahore and Spiti, the region of Kullu and Mandi had a distinct style of its own. These paintings are vigorous expressions. Like Basoli, the style has deep roots in the indigenous idiom. The paintings are mainly on religious themes. They take us to ecstatic heights of the devotee's expression. The gods are presented with such an intimate familiarity that it seems as though they reside close to the painter in these very hills. The tradition of painting in Jammu commenced in the late 17th century. The main patrons of art in Jammu were Ranjit Dev and Balwant Singh. The Jammu ateliers had painters who had migrated from the Mughal courts. Here in Jammu, they painted in the provincial style and not the grand and decorative Mughal manner. Portraits of Ranjit Dev show him in a simple and congenial atmosphere. The settings and moods depicted are very natural and unassuming. The reign of Balbant Singh in the mid-18th century is a significant period in the development of the Jammu style of painting, as he was a great patron of the arts. It was in his reign that Nain Sok, a young painter from Guler, was employed. He produced more than 50 paintings in the Jammu court, recording Balwant Singh's hobbies, music, songwriting, hawking and hunting. He caught his patron at moments of informality as well as of regal grandeur. These paintings are sometimes humorous and always endearing. They reduce the distance which exists between a monarch and his subjects. Balwant Singh is shown wrapped in a quilt to stave off the cold like any common man and at camp with his torso bared in a most unroyal fashion. These depictions create empathy and an intimacy. The painter does not seem to feel a long distance between himself and the ruler. These are the most human royal portraits to be made anywhere. Though Balwant Singh is the ruler, we see the humanity in him. Even today, looking past the centuries, we are moved and feel tender towards this king, who had himself depicted in the most unassuming manner. Guler was the home of a renowned family of painters. 
Seu and his sons Nensuk and Manko, who travelled and found patronage in the courts of other hill states. Here in Guler, the traditional painter met the influences of a new and dominant culture, that of the imperial Mughals. The new manner of painting which was brought from the imperial court had its own beauty, refinement and grace. This was different from the vigorous and simple expressions of the past tradition. The paintings of Guler take on a refined and graceful expression. The painter's touch has a deep humanity. The everyday world is depicted in a natural manner with complete sympathy. These paintings bring us a glimpse of the beauty of the divine as seen by the worshipper. There is in this devotion the quality of tender adoration. The bhakti movement and its delight in mystical love led to some of the most beautiful paintings on the theme of love. In a later school, we see the further blossoming of the aesthetic that developed here. The Guler idiom travelled to Garhwal, where the Guler painters found new patronage. A distinct variant of the Guler manner was developed here. The style had the same tranquil grace and serene dignity as the paintings of Guler. The paintings of Garhwal have a great simplicity and direct appeal. Here we see the little Krishna asking his mother for the moon, which he sees reflected in the water. These paintings, through their tenderness, elevate our souls to a higher plane. The style of Guler also deeply influenced the paintings of Chamba. In the 18th century, during the reign of Raja Raj Singh, artists from Guler were invited to work at Chamba. There was prolific painting in the court here. Both miniatures and murals were made in a style which bore a close resemblance to that of Guler. The paintings of Chamba are also deeply rooted in the religious beliefs of the people. The warmth and humanity of the hill artist is constantly present in all these paintings. In the prevalent Pahari style of this period, the simplicity and vigour of the earlier idiom began to give way to a style of elegance and refinement. The themes carry an air of romance and there is an emphasis on feminine charm. These tiny hill states, which are today seen as remote places, were once centers of exquisite art. The miniature paintings which blossomed here are among the great art of India. Oh, 
These miniatures have deep roots in the vital Western Indian tradition of painting, which flowed here through the paintings of Rajasthan. In these verdant hills, the early idiom met the influence of the Mughal court with its refinement and courtly elegance. Marvelous paintings were created here, which combined the vigor and deep spirituality of the earlier paintings with the sophisticated grace of the Mughal style. The synthesis of these traditions led to the flowering of a style that is breathtaking and beautiful. Kangra One of the great Indian styles which reminds us of Ajanta in its beauty and love of the whole of creation. In the Indian vision, beauty serves the purpose of elevating the soul to a higher plane. Pahari paintings bring us the pure essence of beauty and grace. They are among the most exquisite works of the entire treasure of Indian art.